I'm going to ask a quick favour. If you're listening to this, please hit the subscribe button and the follow button. Like, share, rate, review the podcast. It helps more than you realise. But really what has always been my primary goal from, from day one is just to look after people. And actually, if you look after people, you treat them with respect, then they'll do business with you and they'll look after you in return. But then it, it progressed into criminal activity and it nearly sunk the business, to be honest. I came back from, from honeymoon in, in 2013. I'd, I'd never taken three weeks off since, so the business had been going for six years. And so I took three weeks off because I thought, well, I've got, I've got you know, Emma running the office, I've got my business partner, um, and it'll be fine. And something wasn't right when I came back. And uh, gradually this, this kind of, this whole web of yeah, deceit and fraud started coming to the surface. Um, and yeah, it was, it was quite, and it overflowed into our personal lives because we were friends outside of work. And yeah, so it was a pretty um, explosive period. But again, you know, looking back, it's all, it's all a learning point. There's always a learning point. You know, even if we've done everything we could, there's always something we can take from it and think, well, if we did that right at the start, maybe this wouldn't have happened. So I'm always looking at ways to to learn from any little ripple or little negative that happens to see how we can then future proof things a bit better. I'm a minority here in a you know for age and for orientation, but I fit in still, and actually I'm I'm interesting because of it. You know, <laughs> they're, they're all the same, and I think a lot of people whether it's a, a disability or uh, <clears throat> being an ethnic minority or something that make that sets you apart. Being able to use that as your superpower in business is an incredibly important thing to realise. And the first thing she said was, I wasn't sure if I should do this because it's not legal to be gay in my country. And I suddenly just realised we're so lucky. Because when you see someone who's thinking, I don't know for my own personal safety if I should be appearing on this online forum because it's still illegal for me to be who I am in my country. And, you know, we're in a recording studio today you know she spends her life in those places do, doing things and just to have that always hanging over you that actually the you know the, the state the government of the country doesn't legis doesn't provide protection for you or even acknowledge your existence so yeah that shows you that whether we're in a little bubble here that we all feel safe and happy there, there's always a fight going on for equality it's quite unhealthy to the culture of, of business if people start thinking that's what you've that's the only way you're going to be successful is if you're working 16 hour days and you're you know absorbing all these things because that's not compatible with family life for most people it's not compatible with just a, a healthy work life balance and yeah I'm, you know we all go through periods of of, of graft and um, but i think consistency is far more important because you I mean, if you can survive on four hours or five hours sleep and do all those things, then, then great. But I think being consistent and the only thing I chase is happiness. So success for me just is, is me being happy, the people around me being happy and the people in the business being happy. I believe every business owner has a story to tell. Through seeking true, authentic insights about the entrepreneurial journey, I provide a platform for our peers to share their stories and inspire those that listen. This is the County Business Talk podcast, powered by Picture Book Films. Welcome to another episode of the County Business Talks podcast. My guest this week is MD of award-winning brokerage, Mortgage Medics, who help people buy and refinance property as efficiently as possible. He's a strong advocate for diversity and inclusion within the LGBTQ plus community and a head of Brighton Pride in August. I'm delighted to welcome a good friend of mine, Sam Murphy. Sam, how are you doing? Very good, very good. Nice and cool in here, it boiling cool. outside, yeah. A tad warm, mate, a tad warm out there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the air conditioning, we're doing all right here, we're doing all right. Mate, listen, great to have you on. And we're going to, we've obviously known each other for a few years. It's been really excited about having this conversation. We're going we're gonna to jump straight in. Um, just let, tell us, tell the listeners a little bit about you, a bit about your story, where it all started. Where to start? Well, <clears throat> I, I guess Mortgage Medics has, has been the baby of mine for the last 15 years. Yeah. Uh, so I set Mortgage Medics up when I was 23. And I think like a lot of people who end up running a business, it wasn't necessarily the result of a grand plan. Yeah. It was a, 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 the result of some interesting circumstances. If you cast your mind back to 2007, 2008, we had the, the credit crunch looming, had some economic chaos. And I had a, a, a nine month, well, I'll go back a bit further actually. Yeah. So I, I left school, I didn't go to uni, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't fancy the idea of another few years of academic study. 
Yeah. I was more interested in playing football at lunchtime and maybe <laughs> running over a bit too long after lunch and missing lessons. I've seen and you on the pitch as well. Well, there's a <laughs> yeah. bit of a locker there, mate. Yeah, still I, a bit of locker. I wasn't any better then either. <laughs> um, so I, I said to my dad, look, I want to go and get a job. So I can have a year out, but I'm not going to go anywhere. I was a boring, really boring kid. So I got a job. I remember Dad circled a, an advert in the local paper, and it was for a, just a cashier job at, at Barclays, uh, Woolwich, as it was then. And uh, so went for that, got that job, and I thought, oh, quite, you know, I'm good with numbers. I can, I can do this. Mm-hmm. But I was always quite ambitious. I always wanted to excel and, and try my best. So I did some mortgage exams, CMAP for anyone in the know, mm-hmm. um, and I did two and a half years working for the Woolwich. So I was a, a mortgage advisor. I passed my last exam on my 19th birthday. So. How cool was that? Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I then got approached by someone that, when I worked in a pub I used to serve, he was an estate agent in Horsham um, at Cubit and West, and he said the mortgage arm of that business was looking for people, and would I, be inter- would I be interested? So going from working for a building society to going into a whole of market position where yeah. you're dealing with all the different banks and building societies, and I said, yeah, I'm up for that. And I remember... Uh, Roy, the, the area manager for the Woolwich back in 2004, this would have been, I think. And he sat me down and he said, Sam, you, you've got great potential, but you're not ready. It's too soon. So it's, uh, it's a big, scary world out there. Estate agents, they'll eat you up. And he was right. I wasn't ready. Really? <laughs> it, was, it was a pretty... So I went to work for Mortgage Matters Direct. The, uh, I don't know if I should be... I'm, I can name drop, it's fine. Yeah, okay. um, and so I was there... Got hired for the Horsham job. I lived in Horsham at the time. Got sent to Sutton, Banstead, Cheam, Croydon. Got run all over the place because I was yeah. this enthusiastic twenty-one-year-old uh, at the time, I think. Yeah. And uh, I learned the hard way. Definitely in at the deep end, but learned some great skills. Had some great training. Yeah. Um, and then a few years after getting there, had a really good. Uh, Two thousand six was a great year, but it was also where the cracks were starting to appear in the economy. Yeah. So. <clears throat> You had you know, the run on Northern Rock. You had all these 125% mortgages. You remember that? People yeah, 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 yeah. turning up with 20 grand on credit card debt and still being able to buy a property. And you know, we wonder why certain things went wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> 2007, I joined a, uh, an independent brokerage based up in Crawley. I won't name that one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was only there for nine months. After a few months, I realized I'd made a pretty terrible decision. Or I was working for a place that was that was not run the right the right way. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was sort of everything that was wrong with the mortgage industry at the time. There was it wasn't being done by the book. It was very opportunistic, yeah, bit yeah. of a cowboy setup. But I learned some incredibly valuable lessons there. I learned how to not treat people, how yeah. to not treat clients. Yeah. And I think those negative examples can be just as powerful as positive ones. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> after a few months there. Me and one or two of the other staff there realised that, that things were getting a bit dodgy from an economic point of view and we needed to, uh, well, we were all thinking about going our separate ways. So yeah. we thought, well, why don't we do it together? And so we set up Mortgage Medics, which was really just a, a brand for us all to work under. So yeah. we set up working from home in my spare room at 23 with a little black book with a few names and addresses in it, mm-hmm. just bringing people up saying, you yeah, hello, I've moved on. Um, do you mind if I keep in touch? Yeah. And... And it stemmed from there. But really what has always been my primary goal from, from day one yeah. is just to look after people. Yeah. And actually, if you look after people, you treat them with respect, then they'll do business with you and they'll look after you in return. Yeah. So that was the run up to the birth of, of Mortgage Medics. And for the first few years, it was just a few of us and and actually <clears throat> didn't really look beyond you know the end of my desk and was quite happy doing what I was doing. Um, fast forward 15 years, we're now up to 15 people. So it's been slow, oh, organic yeah. growth. Um, but I can't believe it's been 15 years. 15 years. That's but I'm, I'm keen to know, like, so, like, because it's still at 23. Like, that's a brave thing to go out on your own and go. I'm going to go and do my own bit. But uh, similar to me, I guess in that way that I, I didn't. I didn't you know, when I wasn't going to be a footballer at 16, I, I haven't. I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. So you just go around different things. And so, but for, from a young age, did you ever think about? running your own business was that ever a, a thought process of yours or, or not <laughs> to be honest I, d- I didn't really think about it even when it when it was happening because yeah. I didn't see it as setting up a business really we saw it as 
the the necessary next step yeah, yeah. to get away from a, a, a really bad situation oh, okay. in a difficult economic climate. So yeah. I always referred to it as going self-employed yeah, rather yeah, than setting yeah, sure. up a business. And there were certain milestones I remember setting. Like, I remember thinking one day that phone will ring and it will be someone I don't know. <laughs> <You> know <laughs> rather than, you know, one day someone will have just, oh, I've, just, I've heard you're really good at this. You know, I've not been recommended, but I've just seen you. Or, you know, yeah, I said, oh, great, you know, if you get those, um, those clients that come to you without having to have been put in front of you by somebody else. Yeah. I remember thinking, oh, yeah, what, maybe one day we'll have a few people working for us. But I, I remember at the time thinking, how on earth do we get from, do I get from working in my bedroom to uh, having an office with a few people in it? Yeah. And you know, it just came organically over time. But in terms of when I was younger, I mean, my, my dad worked in sales. He, he was an engineer turned salesman. So he, yeah. he learned his trade for, for BT, up holes and down holes. Mm. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he ended up in, in training and, and sales. So I had a really great example. Um, my dad's a, a wonderful, wonderful man. And he's always respected people and told me yeah. if you treat people well, you know, then that's the, that's the, the fundamental thing to, to getting on in life. Yeah. Um, so that was a really key example for me. But no, I never I never really saw myself running a business. I didn't see myself doing something physical, I'll be honest. Yeah. I was never, <laughs> I, my, my fingertips were always going to say, stay soft. <laughs> that. no, that's, that's really interesting. Like, I think for, for me, like, even like, because I, when you're talking about your dad, that example of treating people, because I think the first time we met, we had a bit of a conversation about this, about, you know, just about our, treat not only clients and stuff but staff and what that looks like just want to create a space where people want to work and, and work where they'll be a little bit later into sort of culture and stuff like that which I find fascinating but I've always had that from you I guess that that type of that conversation that's obviously stemmed like you said from your dad and that upbringing and because it is ultimately whether you're selling something or whatever you're doing people buy from people and if you're a good person and do things in the right way that creates a strong yeah, well, look, that, that nine-month period where I worked at that independent firm in Crawley um, taught me so much, and, and in hindsight, I'm really grateful for it, yeah, yeah. because if you're full-time employed, you give you know, one-third of your waking hours to that business, that employer, yeah. you know, the very least you should get in return is, is a bit of respect and, yeah. and being heard. If you've got ideas, if you've got preferences, then you know, working to one person's idea of how things should be is, is not is not scalable for yeah, one thing yeah, and yeah, hasn't yeah, cool. the last few years taught us that with hybrid working and everything. Absolutely. Um, and I thought the other thing I noticed in, in other businesses was just how debilitating staff turnover was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're forever recruiting and training or dealing with messy, uh, you know, endings of employment, yeah. then and I, re I realized that running a small business, I, I, can't, I haven't got people to do that for me. If I have problems, I'm gonna have to deal with that myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I thought, well, you know, the easy way to avoid those is to look after the people you've got. Yeah. Um, you know, don't waste all that investment in time and, and energy in, in getting people to, to share your vision in, in how we do things yeah. by doing other things that then mean they feel they've got to go elsewhere. Yeah, yeah of course. And it's simple things, you know, I mean, pay people well, for God's sake, yeah, yeah. you know. <laughs> It's, Play, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's it's a, it's an investment. If you pay people market leading rates, as long as you've got the income there in the first place, yeah. then you know that's you know, people might like their jobs, but they stay for the money. You know, you yeah, can, yeah. you can't you can't have the best working environment, pay people a pittance, and expect them to stay. I, I do agree. I, 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 do, do you think that? Like, do, do you think people's mind shift has changed? Like, look, you, of course you've got to earn enough money to pay your bills and stuff like that, but certainly from um, I think since COVID as well, people sort of analyse them more around purpose and what that looks like. And, you know, if they are valued, if you can pay people well and they're valued in that way, you, you're on to a winning ticket, surely. But if that's not the case, but you still create that environment where people want to be and you create a, a nice space that then they are respected and they, they feel that they're doing something with the right company or whatever, then do, do you think that's changed slightly, though? Do you think that people are more... Bit, more purpose driven on it yeah I mean I think that you know we refer I will be referring to COVID and lockdown yeah, yeah, until yeah. our dying day won't be yeah, now because of, of the the shake up it gave us all um, you know everyone certainly reprioritized things and I think it's, it's given people an amazing insight into what what priorities are yeah, you know yeah, yeah. green spaces fresh air yeah. you know space to live 
um, space to do stuff at home and time with the family. They're the, the big things that people yeah, yeah, yeah. had that <laughs> that enforced taste of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To, you know, not all of them maybe, but yeah. uh, and then suddenly I realised come the end of the, or you know the, the gradual phase return to work, we were never going to be able to go back to five days a week in the office. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want to. Nobody yeah. else wanted to. Yeah, yeah. And we had a mix of preferences about who wanted to do what. So we decided to settle on three days in the office and two days working from home yeah. and we worked it out because we've still got a pre- you know we've got a shop front where we'd like yeah, people to walk through the front door so we need to make sure there's enough people there we've got young people learning the trade and growing their skill set we need to make sure there's enough good examples around them all the time yeah. Yeah. so it, it's a balance because there are certainly people in in my business and in any business who given their you know free choice might say well do you know what? I can do this job completely from home and I know a lot of people are doing that. But I think when you work for a business that looks after you, yeah. there is a trade-off there in terms of, you know, yeah, maybe you can do it from home, but would you mind coming in? Because the team benefit when you're in, you've got great skills and knowledge that you know, people just rub off against each other, don't they, when they're in the office? I think that's it. Because like, obviously over the last year or so since recording these episodes, things have changed, and COVID, and et cetera, et cetera, other bits. But, but and, I, and I talk about this a lot around uh, the, you know, working from home against coming into it. And don't be wrong, it's been great, I guess, from a recruitment point of view. Other, some companies, depending on what industry you're in, you're able to recruit further afield, and people can work remotely, and that's fine. But there is, are we missing out on that? Because there's, one, the learning process with, like you say, younger people coming in and learning from more experienced people, being in that office and just being able to ask that quick question. If you're at home, you're not going to just go oh, jump on a Zoom or send an email to ask something very quickly. So you, the, the people miss out on that sort of learning education experience within within an environment. And again, back to culture, like creating that. Look, we talk about football, etc., but creating that team bond and that team. That, it's a lot more difficult to do remotely, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think that there are two things that are really difficult to do remotely. One, you've you've touched on learning yeah. and development, um, but the second is creativity. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah. if you, you know, I'm a pretty list driven person, so I've got a list of stuff every day I want to get done. Yeah. You know, the the critical stuff I'll get done every day. Yeah. The the stuff that's kind of optional if you're if you're working, let, you know, just me and you here, isn't it? No, yeah, we'll, yeah, let, yeah. we can be honest. <laughs> you know, the stuff that's going to take you know an hour of kind of creative thinking and you know brainstorming that's hard at home I think because whatever distractions you've got whether it's family or whether it's you know hanging the washing up or <laughs> yeah all those little <laughs> things that we you know we, we the little wins we try and get when we're working from home yeah. I think that collaboration and that creativity that is a lot harder from home yeah. and so sometimes and I know some of the guys at work you know they'll, they'll admit it free they come into work for a break because yeah. <laughs> you know, they've got young families it's you know they love being spending more time with their kids but it's a double-edged sword because yeah. it doesn't always mean you can get on and have that real headspace to get on with yeah. uh, stuff that requires a lot of brain power. Yeah. So I think that's a challenge, but you know, we've all got to, whether we're employers or employees, we've all got to think, you know, how am I going to get the best out of my time or my people's time yeah. whilst respecting everyone's you know, wishes to do the, the job competently in a, in a different way? Yeah, yeah. And it is a, it's a, it's a balance. I think, like you say, I, the more people I speak to... Uh, seem to be getting that balance where they originally they was going oh you know where do you start we can work from home now we will we don't need an office and then other people can well actually you know what we need to keep this and we need to keep it a bit more fluid and like you say two three days a week being there because they are there's some like look like, certainly for me i think there's that learning thing that next generation just gonna miss out on so much in that cultural environment and from a learning perspective but just just from a team building and building that that great culture I think within, I think people will miss out on that but I mean look mm-hmm. obviously look talking a little bit about sort of obviously you said Covid will happen but talk to me about obviously 15 years of running a business there's got to be some challenges along the way uh, how was like the last couple of years what's that look like for you or talk to me about some other challenges over the last 15 years what's that look like yeah I mean I mean, COVID is, it's impossible to ignore because it was the biggest challenge any of us had ever faced. You know, I, I had a, a business continuity plan. I had a document about what do we do if the office burns down or, you know, there's a <laughs> outbreak of war. I didn't have pandemic on there. <laughs> was that not in there? It wasn't <laughs> one of the options. Global pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'll be honest, when, you know, that, that ominous first broadcast came out where, you know, it was Boris behind the desk and telling us we must stay home, 
I suddenly thought a real sense of response, felt a real sense of responsibility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, I'm really glad, both for me and the rest of the team, that we're in this position. We're a small business. We can adapt quickly. We can all talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And you know, we're in a, an industry that actually was fortunate to be able to work remotely relatively easily. Yeah, so many yeah, businesses yeah. didn't have that luxury. So yeah, I, yeah. I was very thankful for the positives we did have, even in that moment of crisis. I still remember vividly everyone sort of I sent the message out in the evening, right, whether it's tonight or tomorrow morning, you need to come into the office, you need to collect your big old desktop PC and your yeah, screen yeah. and stuff and take it home. <laughs> the first thing I thought was we should probably move to laptops at some point <laughs> because, <laughs> yeah, you know... Lucky like now, man. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like a 1980s ghetto <laughs> blaster without the street cred. So, <clears throat> uh, so yeah, it, I mean, that, that was a, a huge challenge, but it was a challenge we all faced together. Um, what other challenge? I mean, I, I had a, a dodgy business partner when we first... Um, really? set up um, so the three of you that started it they're not all obviously yeah well there was there was three of us that became two amicably and then it became three because we had a, a late joiner that was supposed to be there from the start yeah. but then he was the problem one but in it kick off, that kicked off in 2013 and huge lesson huge huge learning point uh, I think the negatives, as I've already said, you know, that they because they create such a, they leave a scar when those yeah, negative yeah. things happen, and you're never going to forget them. Yeah. So, the sing, the the simplest lesson I took from that is, don't go into business with someone just because they're there. Yeah, yeah. If you, you know if someone's right, you know the the longer you're in business, the more that gut feeling looks after you, yeah, yeah, yeah. and just because you might be able to share some of the overheads or you know, have a bit of holiday cover or things like that. If you know deep down that person is not as good as you yeah, yeah. or doesn't have a complementary skill set where you can feed off them and learn off them and, and vice versa, if you know deep down they're not actually a, a decent person, which is sadly what, what came to pass here, yeah. don't do it. You know, trust your gut, do the hard work on your own. And if you want an investor, well, work out what you need. A few people recently have said to me, oh, I need a business partner. And I said, well, what is it you need? You know, is it is it knowledge of some area? Is it investment? Is it you know holiday cover? Yeah, <laughs> Things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because you know, do you need a business partner, especially if you've established a business and you've got it to to a certain point? Do you want to let someone benefit from from all of that? Are they going to buy in, or actually, do you need an outside expert, someone that you can call on from time to time? Do you yeah. need to outsource some of these things? Um, I'll, I'll never have a business partner again as a result of what, what happened. Right. But I, I think that's, uh, you know, if you've got so far in, in life, but you, you're self-aware enough to realize, actually, there's a few areas I need a bit of support in, whether it's you know, web design, marketing, all those things. You and I know from all the, the out and about that we do yeah, that yeah, there's yeah. there's something, there's someone with any skill set that you need out there just waiting to find you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love that. Easy. Uh, it's a, it's a strange one, isn't it? Because I have a business partner in the past you sort of look at, and I think when, when certainly when it's yours, or and if you've got a certain type of work ethic that you're you're a grafter, so you'll go out and you're going to know you're going to put that blood, sweat, and tears in, and then potentially the other person not doing that, that can leave a bit of a bad taste, can't it? And that's a difficult thing. Like like you said, listening to your gut and going, I oh, know that's not right. I think that's what I need, but deep down and do, do you think looking back now do you think that like, at the time you had the, the gut your gut was saying maybe that's not the right thing but yeah com completely and look it, it started off like that it started off with oh yeah we're, we're just not quite on the same page in terms of ethic and effort yeah. but then it, it progressed into criminal activity and it nearly sunk oh, wow. the business to be honest wow. I came back wow. from from honeymoon in, in 2013 I'd, I'd never taken three weeks off since mm -hmm. so the business had been going for six years and so I took three weeks off because I yeah. thought well I've got I've got you know, Emma running the office, I've got my business partner, um, and it'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. And something wasn't right when I came back. And uh, gradually this this kind of this whole web of yeah, deceit and fraud started coming to the surface. Wow. Um, and yeah, it was it was quite and it overflowed into our personal lives because we were friends outside of work and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so it was a pretty um, explosive period. Yeah. But again, you know, looking back it's all it's all a learning point. Right. And, that, and I guess that's the thing, aren't they? Then, like again, you lead to COVID as, as challenges for some business, but you know, for whatever stage you've been at your business, you, there's always challenges and things that, that, that get thrown at you, isn't it? But it's uh, how you deal with them, what you take out of them as a learning experience, and then show the resilience, I guess, to 
to go again and keep going. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that in the instant that it became apparent, I suddenly thought, oh, great, here's an opportunity to learn something. <laughs> like, I had the <laughs> sleepless <laughs> nights. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I had the, the whole cycle of emotions, the, you know, the, the anger, the, the upset and all those things. But I think you do have to, you know, when, when you're running a business, you do have to realise that that period of emotional response has to be short. Yeah. because it's not going to serve you it's not going to serve your clients or your colleagues yeah, if, yeah. if you're seen to be you know grieving or unstable for too long so you've got to get on with the job yeah, yeah. and it is you know uh, and it is consolation mm -hmm. that there are always things you can you know if, even if we get com a complaint you know a very minor ripple we don't get very many thankfully because the guys work so hard but even when we get a complaint and often it's a misunderstanding or something and yeah. the guys are like well you know I did everything I could on this one and and I still got you know someone a little bit unhappy or even if that person, all things said, is, is a bit unreasonable, there's always a learning point. You know, even if we've done everything we could, there's always something we can take from it and think, well, if we did that right at the start, maybe this wouldn't have happened. Yeah, yeah. So I'm always looking at ways to to learn from any little ripple or little negative that yeah. happens to see how we can then future-proof things a bit better. Love that. Because ultimately, I guess as entrepreneurs, business owners, we, we're, we're sort of we're in that environment where we want to if there's a problem we generally try and find a solution whatever that because what, what's the other alternative is you go quite a day then and we wrap up and <laughs> yeah. up. that's very rarely an option isn't it like you go you know especially when if you've grown to a certain size and you've got there's the other responsibilities and that and you know whatever decision you make at that time but it is it's, I guess it's what, what's interesting as well I guess from your put listening to that around the whole communication element of it as well and knowing that it's okay for people to make mistakes, but less, you know, because people are going to, aren't they? We're all human beings. We're going to make mistakes along the way. And I guess if people feel that they're able to approach you with that, you know, we have, oh, I, we have made a mistake. I felt like I've done the best I could, but you go, okay, well, but we look at this like this, and that was the that's going to be the better outcome next time. If we look, that's a al allowing people the space to be able to make mistakes is is okay, no? Yeah, absolutely. Look, everyone, we, we've trained up a number of our advisors from, from scratch or taken them on from a, a you know, limited experience. Mm -hmm. One of the things I always make a point of is to say, look, unless you're deliberately doing things wrong, then it's all right. You know, we'll get over it. Everyone yeah, makes yeah. mistakes. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I keep a little list of a few of the big ones that I made so I can reassure people that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, nobody's perfect. We've all, been, we've, yeah. we've all been there. We've all been there. Um, but, you know, as, as long as people have got the right attitude and they're willing to learn and they're willing to reflect mm -hmm. on things that have gone wrong, with a view to, to making it better in the future, then that's all you, that's all you can ask of people. Yeah. If you've got a bad egg, that's different. Yeah, you know, if you've got yeah. someone who's always cutting corners or you know, who's, who's trying to bend the rules to, to suit themselves, then that's, that's a different kettle of fish. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree, I agree. Um, I talked to you as well about, I wanted to just delve into what we were talking about, some challenges and stuff as well within, um, I guess there's a, a LGBTQ plus entrepreneur in that sort of space. What, have you faced any challenges within the business community there or it's, I think looking back I was always nervous that I would mm. and for that reason I think I hid it quite a lot so you know I I never thought I'd walk into a room and broadcast oh hi I run a mortgage business I'm a gay man yeah um Equally, I, I didn't feel there was a huge amount of prejudice or barriers there in the first place. We've come a long way yeah, over the yeah, last yeah. 30 years, even over the last 15 years since yeah. I've been in business. I remember when I started up and I started going to the to meetings with my peer group, yeah. you know, I was about 20 years younger than the average person there. Yeah. It was a very white, male, presumably straight man dominated environment, yeah. as a lot of business environments are. And I, yeah. I re really remember that. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm a minority here in a you know, for age and for orientation, but I fit in still. Yeah, yeah. And actually I'm, I'm interesting because of it. You know, yeah, <laughs> they're, yeah. they're all the same. Yeah, 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 and I think yeah. a lot of people, whether it's a, a disability or uh, <clears throat> being an ethnic minority or something that make, that sets you apart, yeah, yeah, of course. being able to use that as your superpower in business is an incredibly important thing to realize and I think I, looking back I, I regret that I did I felt like I hid it unnecessarily a little bit yeah. I think I should have embraced it a bit more yeah. um, but it also made me super conscious that you know there are minorities within minorities mm. and you know the, the acronym for uh, that you use L LGBTQIA plus if you want to use all of them there yeah, yeah, yeah that's ever-changing ever-lengthening yeah. um, and I think the reason is that you know 
Pride, which you know, we've just had Pride Month and we've got Brighton Pride coming up. Yeah, yeah, um, you know, there's a lot of detractors about Pride. There's a lot of people who say it's become very mainstream. You know, if you've got corporation after corporation with their their floats in the parade, is that really the the message? And I think we should support businesses that give their um, their queer staff a, a platform. You know, if you want to go and wave a flag on, you know, for a, a big corporation, then great because yeah. that shows that your employer is on board with it. But you're seeing offshoots for, for pride movements like Black Pride. We just had Trans Pride at the weekend in yeah, Brighton, yeah, yeah. and I think that it shows firstly that there are uh, minorities within that community yeah, that sure. st that face bigger challenges. Yeah. You know, being a, being a uh, the, the the trans community is relatively small, yeah. and yet it still is um, being affected by you know the, the Tory leadership race. Yeah. Suddenly, those five candidates now decide that who uses what bathroom is an important policy statement, and it yeah. it seems things are, are blown out of proportion. Where uh, maybe that's the wrong wrong phrase, but yeah, you know, there are, as as a white gay man, I think we kind of won that battle a long time ago, and we've yeah, always got sure. to keep on top of it. But I think it's really important if you're from any minority, yeah, yeah. that you look out for the, the, the people who are still facing prejudice and still facing difficulties just getting on with their regular life. Love that. And I, I, do, I, 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 I spoke on here openly a couple of times about, and I think I might have mentioned it to you before, but obviously my, I've got twins and you know my, my son is very gender fluid, so you know, we went to school today with pigtails and a gingham dress and yesterday ago brilliant and, uh, yeah it, it, last week he's got in shorts and a t-shirt and you know he's air tied back and that's it and uh, he, he he's very bad as a society where so you know it's something from, from a bloke who's born and bred in Dagenham and come with a you know my own historic mindset of what that always I'd like to think I've always been a really open-minded person I, I think you know growing up even growing up in where I did in Dagenham I feel, still think I had quite enough, but he's taught me so much about the world, and I think to open my mind even more and be as accepting as possible for everyone. Whatever. And as a society, we are still so adamant that we have to put people in boxes somewhere. And even at seven years old, he's still like, I'm, I'm just Luca, like, I don't need to be defined by a, a group of some kind in some way. And exactly, and what you find is, yeah, the, the people who, for some reason, have a real problem with with that kind of thing, mm. don't have any first hand experience of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you meet kids who are gender fluid, possibly trans, yeah. you realise they're just kids. They're just yeah. being themselves. Yeah, yeah. And actually, people who have a problem with it think it's their parents trying to push them into some strange middle ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's not. It's just who they are. Yeah. And actually, all you're doing is you're letting them express themselves and be who they are yeah. until they. Yeah, that may be how. They stay. Yeah. They may, they may grow out of it. Yeah, they, yeah. You know, but it's just, you know, if you try and restrict a kid's creativity or yeah. their true self, then you're you're just going to store up problems for the future. Yeah. Which ironically is is exactly what, you know, the the, the anti brigade are, are worried about. They think you're storing up problems by letting kids express themselves. So, yeah. it's a you know it, it's a battle, and I get why it's difficult for people yeah, because yeah. until you have first experience, first hand experience, you yeah, don't really yeah. understand what what it means. But I think what are you mentioned it's spot on in regards to the fact that there's minorities within those groups and that we've got to be open-minded to all of that. And yeah, and I think you've got to look towards the people that are, are facing the hardest challenge, challenges yeah. and, and that's why actually trans people have always been at the heart of the pride movement. You know, the yeah. original Stonewall riots in New York were, uh, you yeah, that, know, that was a riot, uh, yeah. you know, uh, well, yeah, led, led by trans people who, yeah. who weren't going to have it anymore and because they couldn't really as easily just blend into the background yeah, because yeah. they were clearly different. Yeah. And so you know that, that fight goes on as we see around the world. Um, I was doing a, a panel discussion online um, for my G worker last month and there was me, there was, there was five of us on the panel. One of the panelists was from Malaysia. She was a music producer and she was a gay woman. And she said at one point, and I was thinking, oh, have I got time to fit this in my schedule? Yeah, I'll do it. it it's going to be good. Mm. And the first thing she said was, I wasn't sure if I should do this because it's not legal to be gay in my country. And wow. I suddenly just realised we're so lucky. <laughs> because when you see someone who's thinking, I don't know for my own personal safety if I should be appearing on this online forum because it's still illegal for me to be who I am in my country. Yeah. And, you know, we're in a recording studio today you know she spends her life in those places do, doing things 
and just to have that always hanging over you that actually the you know the, the state the government of the country doesn't legis doesn't provide protection for you or even acknowledge your existence so yeah that shows you that whether we're in a little bubble here that we all feel safe and happy there, there's always a fight going on for equality yeah no, I, agree. Yeah, it's, I think you're right you touched on it like we're uh, full, I, I, I feel very lucky and privileged at where, where we are and that Luca has grown up in you know, in Brighton and being in the place that we are and our, our thoughts like you said it almost seems like a bubble here that is just so accepting and so amazing that we're yeah feel very fortunate I think it's yeah that's uh that's awesome right um I want to I want to I want to touch on something now I wanted to move on uh, touching on obviously the, some of the challenges that obviously with running a business and stuff I know we spoke off now you sort of email when we we spoke a little bit about um you being comfortable with not taking over the world within the business <laughs> and I really I really I really like that and I, but I just want to talk, talk to me a little bit about that and and what sort of success looks like to you yeah well look, I think this we've grown up as adults with social media yeah. the generations below us are growing up with it since birth and that yeah, yeah. that's a really scary slash interesting situation to be in yeah. and I think it, it's tempting to think that LinkedIn is a bit of a safe space because the comment sections aren't quite so wild as if you're going on Facebook or other places. <laughs> yeah, sure. But actually, um, it can still be unhealthy. And what, what, when I said I'm quite happy not taking over the world, there's a lot of very noisy people who get up at half four in the morning, you know, go for a sea swim, read three books, yeah, before they've had breakfast <laughs> <laughs> and you know and it's not me you know yeah. and um and i thought actually it's it's quite unhealthy to the culture of, of business if people start thinking that's what you've that's the only way you're going to be successful is if you're working 16 hour days and you're you know absorbing all these things because that's not compatible with family life for most people mm -hmm. it's not compatible with just a, a healthy work-life balance mm -hmm. And yeah, I'm, you know, we all go through periods of, of, of graft, yeah. um, but I think consistency is far more important because you, I mean, if you can survive on four hours or five hours sleep and do all those things, then, then great. But I think being consistent and the only thing I chase is happiness because success for me, I don't measure in, you know, I could probably spend more money on a car, but no point. Yeah. Uh, I've got a nice house, I've just moved actually, so I've got a very nice house, mm -hmm. but. Um, but it's not, you know, it's not millions of pounds. Yeah, yeah. And but it, you know, I mean, those are those are the physical sort of trophies from yeah. 15 years of, of hard graft. But actually, I don't have to live there. I I, I didn't have a car for a few years. So I wanted to try to try and live without one. Um, the only thing that really gives you satisfaction at the end of the day is, is happiness. And if money gives you happiness, then great. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but actually, yeah, yeah. for most people, it's more complicated than that. So. Um, you know, I've thought, well, do, do I want to get any bigger than we are now? Because 15 people is great because it's like a big family. Yeah. Because you know everyone's business. You know, you can remember everyone's kids' names yeah. just yeah. <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> um, you know, where people go on a holiday and all those things. And suddenly, if you know, the next kind of layer of expansion, you know, is because you need probably more managers and things. And then, so we're probably the next phase would be, you know, 15 to 50. And I just, I don't want to sound unambitious, but I just don't know if I need it. You know, the quality of our product is the service and having the, the best people to forge those great relationships and, and look after. I often use the example of a car mechanic. You know, if you, you're, always, you're always worried about are you going to get ripped off if you go into a car mechanic because it's not something you can fix yourself. Yeah, yeah. For a lot of people, what we do isn't something they can do themselves. Getting, you know, finding the best mortgage deal, if you've got tricky circumstances, yeah. you know, finding a solution that you can't just knock on all the high street lenders for. But if you find a great car mechanic who tells you in simple terms what the problem is and how it needs to be fixed, or even tells you actually, do you know what? You don't owe me anything. There's nothing wrong with it. You're imagining it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes doing nothing and just telling people, look, come back when you need us. You don't need us right now. Yeah. You know, that's that's the core. That's that's doing the right thing for people, and that's the most important thing. So success for me just is is me being happy, the people around me being happy, and the people in the business being happy. I love that, and there's, there's some there's something so refreshing about it because I I listened to you talk and actually started to shrivel a little bit when I go because I posted that I 
got up at five o'clock. <laughs> I didn't mean you. No, 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 no. But no, but this is why I, I think it's better because there's there's something, and I, I'm because I, I question this about myself a lot, um, about and I, I, you know, people say to me, oh, you're everywhere, you're doing this, and that. and it, there's a part of me that it's going, oh yeah, 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 and you can portray this element of what that maybe success looks like because you're busy and you're doing it, but actually you're just making a lot of noise sometimes, and actually that's not really who I am or what I'm about necessarily it's just the highlight reel of what my week looks like or something you know? but I'm almost if you're celebrating those you know oh, I've done a long day or whatever that is because there's so much around that hustle culture isn't there that you feel that you know it, yeah. y- you've got you know there's 24 hours in a day we could be productive <laughs> all the time and I think I've brought so much into that from a negative point of view if I'm being honest I think I've brought so much into that you go oh god can be almost to the point that when I'm not being productive or I'm not doing something that I find it really hard to switch off so I go I should be doing and I feel guilty about it well that, that's the worry and it, it, you can be any age and, and be affected by this but I see it in younger people coming into the industry the feeling that they have to be emulating these very successful entrepreneurs yeah. and like, I've, I've got up at you know six quarter to six in the morning and cycle up to Ditchling Beacon about once or twice in the last year <laughs> you know it's one of those things where yeah. if I wake you know those magic mornings where you wake up the weather's all right and you're like well I'm up now and I'm not tired and actually I can do something and yeah. like right I'm gonna do it I'm gonna get out there so but I wouldn't pretend I do it every week and, you know yeah. but when you do it if you feel great about doing it as you know the endorphins do and you're, you're proud of yourself you got yourself out of bed yeah. early and then then you know, by all means celebrate it but I think yeah, there is that danger that sometimes younger people or, or any people trying to be successful feel that th- there's some extraordinary level of, of effort or early mornings or things you've you've got to subscribe to, and I just don't think it's the case. You know, if, if my business was a, was a corner shop, you know, we've probably got two or three corner shops. Yeah. Do I want to become Tesco's? No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely yeah, yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'd rather be you know the nice corner shops that people want to go to because they sell nice stuff and they you get a good chat when you go in there. So. I think yeah. it's all about working out what your success is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, some people will be driven more by money. Yeah, but then yeah. again, I think if you look after happiness, the money looks after itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I completely... Uh, and, I, uh, and I think, definitely, if we had spoke probably five years ago and spoke about my... I, I was quite motivated by money. And I think, you know, I spoke about on here a few times about where I, turning 40 hit me really hard and I was like oh, I've not made the money I thought I was going to make I'm not a millionaire blah 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 <laughs> and uh, you move your mindset around that completely the opposite and I'm not driven by money actually at all to be honest now um, and it is it's more the relationships I forge and build and whether that be in a business environment family life or whatever that is that uh, you know that's actually where my true success is I'm fortunate enough to have a lot of people around me that I, I love dearly and I'm believe they love me as well and I think that's that's I guess where my personal success is the other side of it I I, I do agree I think the financial side one day that may come but all that will help is me to maybe buy bigger more material stuff that I don't need well that's it and that's the the problem with money isn't it there's always more yeah you you could always have more yeah and as long as you've got enough to you know to to pay the bills that's the main thing but like you know I, I know you as you said, you know, for a few years, and you know, I know that the events that you put on have always got great energy. You know, you light up a room. You, unfortunately, you haven't, you can't clone yourself, you know, <laughs> because you know, so much of that magic is your personality. Yeah. Um, obviously, the people you've got around you are fantastic as well yeah. when they're supporting you at these events or your, your partners in the events. Yeah. But um, that's the trick when you're, and I've had this issue that you know, when so much of your brand is you personally, yeah, sure. and you know, I, I can't keep every client I've ever done work for over the years because yeah. 15 years worth of clients. So sometimes I have to say, look, I'm gonna set you up with so-and-so yeah. because they've got the resources to look after you properly. And un- unfortunately, yeah. that's, you know, I'm a bit more stretched these days. Yeah. You know, some people really don't like it because they've bought into you over these years. But you know, that leads on to another thing really that you know, delegation and, and work-life balance, you know, yeah. you can't do everything. But you can do the things you do well, and you can do the things that you you can use your your overload mm. to to seed other people's careers. Mm. So everyone who joins um, my business, we try and set them up with some of our long-standing clients. Yeah. Um, 
to, to give them a little boost into their career so they don't have to find all of their own business. And once you learn how to hand people over and, and you know, transfer that relationship while still being in the background if needed, mm. it's a huge weight off your mind. And that's, what, and that's a really important thing to enable growth mm. if you're looking to grow a small business. The hardest growth I ever did was from you know, hiring the first person. Yeah. It's a huge uh, test of your resources and your organization because you've got to do all the training yourself. Yeah. But every recruit after that gets easier. So try and, if anyone's looking from going from a one-man band to hiring someone, yeah. do it before you're overloaded or do it at a quiet period in the year if your work is seasonal. Yeah. Because if you're flat out and suddenly you go, oh God, I need someone else in the business because I, I just can't, I can't do all this work, it's too late because you've got to reduce that workload to make time for training that person up. So you've got to accept that for a period of time you're going to have, you're going to have to spend a bit of money, so squirrel a bit away if you possibly can, and you're going to have to try and get your workload to a point where you've got that time to bring someone else on. So a recession is a great time. If your workload has naturally reduced <laughs> itself, and if there's suddenly people, good people out of work, then be, be brave, be bold, and think, right, this is the opportunity, you know, and again, positives out of negatives. If you see a negative economic situation that you think is going to cause your business to suffer, it's not going to be forever. So make the most of it and use that free time to try and implement the growth plans that you might have. That's a really interesting point because there's something about that. Like, <clears throat> you, I'm keen to find out about you because your entrepreneurial mindset allows you to see those opportunities, whereas other people will maybe panic around those times and look at that. No recession, you know, got to tighten things. You got can't market, can't do this, can't do this. So they tight everything tight. Whereas people that become successful and or grow a business or whatever that looks like to, to them, seeing those opportunities, isn't it? Like that, you just seem very like talking to you and listening to you, open minded about seeing those opportunities and going, you know what? Oh, that might be a little bit. And and that your, your I guess your relationship with risk then is is that what? Lot less like do you go oh, okay of course I can take this risk because I believe in that product what you're doing I mean I, I think I've got the luxury of being a bit more measured now and having a, a more of a, a bird's eye view of things yeah. because I've had yeah, I've learned the hard way yeah. I've, I've made those uh, those difficult recruits when I've been yeah, the things I'm recommending people do, by the way, is because I didn't do them the first time around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, like, I did hire someone when I had no time to, to train them, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, I didn't hire in a recession. I when I was just navel gazing and wondering how bad it was going to get. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. it's only with the benefit of hindsight that, you, and I didn't really, I never really looked for inspiration. The first four or five years of the business, I just didn't really, because I was busy. I thought. Oh, I don't want to go networking. I'll just get sat next to someone who's really boring. <laughs> and then I'll have loads of work to do when I get back to the office. And and then, I mean, you know, boring people do exist. But if you're sat next to them, that's your fault. <laughs> so, you know, um, so, yeah, I, I think, you know, hindsight is, is, is fantastic. And look, if you are in an industry where there are people you look, you look up to, and, and if you don't know who they are, find them. Because actually most people who have been successful have time for you yeah. because they want to prevent you from making the same mistakes yeah. and you know people love showing off and if showing off is helping somebody else then brilliant because you know you're everyone's happy then yeah i love that i love that all right um i, want, I wanted to talk so a little bit about with the it was interesting to say about it with the organic growth of, of of mortgage medics and uh, that's a state that it's really interesting to see that just that gradual process that, that you sort of mentioned about how that has, that's grown organically as opposed so and and i guess you what you've mentioned there is it it's highlighting realizing those mistakes and highlighting those opportunities where you've seen areas to to sort of grow over the years because it's i guess some people go right well, you didn't go into it necessarily then Listen to what you spoke about, but think go into it. And this, well, in five years, we're going to be this size. In ten years, we're going to be this size. That's my next five-year plan. It's mm. been completely along the lines of right. Okay, I'll, I'll take that opportunity right now and and grow in that sort of sense. Well, it, it, yeah, but it's also been driven not by a, a, a hunger for growth, but by a desire to maintain standards. Mm. So people come to us because they get a personal service and they get the right outcome mm. so they need to talk to someone who's got the right skills knowledge and expertise to 
and, and time, resources mm -hmm. available to, to look after them. So if we're too busy, then service suffers. So yeah. that's been one trigger for, for growth. Um, but I think there's pressure as well. If you're thinking, okay, I'd, I'd like to grow, there's also pressure to seek out investment or to mm -hmm. scale quickly. Mm -hmm. Now that, that works for, for people. For me, that was never, I never felt that was gonna work for me. Yeah. And the reason is you look at anything that grows quickly and there's usually a degradation of the quality there. Yeah. And I said earlier, you know, we pay people well. And if you scale quickly, that's a, that's a challenge. You can't pay people as well because you're always fueling the, the growth. Yeah. And so then you lose the good people. And actually, if you're not careful, you, you have a bit of a domino effect and you try and scale too quickly. The people who you did have get upset that it's not the business they joined, that they're yeah. being overlooked in favor. You know, the, the boss is spending all his time trying to recruit these new people who aren't any good at the job. Yeah. So certain business lend themselves to, to that kind of scaling. Yeah. But I think what because we're trying to nurture professionals into forging great relationships with people, yeah. For me, it's always been about preserving the product and then growing when it's when it's right. And if that means we we don't grow, you know, half as quick as other businesses, uh, yeah, I'm fine with that yeah. because it's about the it's about the quality, quality. rather than the the, the quantity. That, like, because again, let's delve in then to a bit more talk to me more about the culture within within Mortgage Ready. Was that was that from the, from the start? Was that your sort of vision for that? But like, as, as we grow, it's just going to 100 percent core value has got to be that we provide that great service and that's my non-negotiable almost. Yeah, really, because, um, and from, look, from a selfish point of view, it's hard work to stamp a culture that isn't focused on happiness. Mm. Because if you're constantly having to deny people, you know, I don't, I've got to go to a funeral, you know, or is it a close family member, you know, if it, you know, if you if you would rather not be there, then that's not really a holiday in my book. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> so if you're if you're going to you know your great auntie's funeral, and you haven't seen her for ten years. You know, you don't have to sacrifice a day from your holiday in the summer to do it. You know, so little things, just treat again, treating people with respect. I always say to to my guys, I'm helping you grow your business within my business, mm -hmm. because I want us to be in it for the long term, and that's only going to work and be sustainable if we support and respect each other. Uh, that's really interesting you because when I was at the salon I had that same type of conversation I, w I was like this is you know it's my business and you've come on board and blah 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 but I, I tried to create that where I would like you know your column is your business and you've got that within so you know if you work you there's this benefit and there's this benefit and if you're building your little business within that and and I found that we I've, personally I found that really difficult to I guess whether to articulate or to build that, and I, I wonder whether for me it was always a case because I wasn't a hairdresser. They was like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So uh, I wonder. I guess from you, you as a leader, you, you can lead by examples. You do. I'm going to help you grow your business in that sense. Yeah, I mean, and it doesn't work for everyone. You know, some people do want just a uh, a vehicle to turn up nine to five, do their work, and go yeah. home. And I'm not going to shame anyone for that because that's, you know, if you want things to be there, but if you don't want to engage as much and put the effort in as much yourself, then you're not going to get as much out of it as somebody else mm -hmm. would do. Yeah. So I think it's important to be honest with people about what that trade off looks like, yeah. but also to be really thoughtful about how you pay people to make sure that it's always proportionate in some way to, to their level of investment yeah, as well. Yeah, sure, sure. And that's what we've always tried to do. Um, I think most people realise it's it's great. But sorry, what I was going to say was, but also success isn't the same for everyone, like we were talking yeah, earlier. Yeah, yeah, sure, you know, sure. People achieve different levels, yeah. and I don't measure everyone by our highest achiever in terms of revenue or in terms of you know selling life insurance or things like that. Yeah. Everyone's got their strengths, and some people are just never going to perform to the same level as others, and that's yeah. okay. And as yeah. long as everyone knows that's okay, yeah. then yeah, that's fine. Because then... Like you said, you just I guess I guess from your point of view, as long as people come in and are doing the best of their ability, if that ability is not as good as the next person, again we always use a football example. It's the same thing that but that team actually can't work without all of those players. So even if you're not as strong potentially as that person there scoring, you still got to do your job and to the best of your ability, and that's how we all work together. Huh? 
exactly. Yeah, I mean, what, what's the one thing you'll never forgive from a teammate is them just not not pulling their weight, yeah, not yeah. bothering, not yeah. tracking back. Right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> get back, get back. I'll see you, shower people. Get back. Yeah. <laughs> you should be making that run from left back. You can't get back. <laughs> I love that. But, um, so the, the other thing. So obviously, it's, it's good to talk about the, the, the one thing. Again, I, I talk about a lot on here. But, probably because what I, I struggle with the most is the whole work-life balance scenario. Talk, talk to me about about work-life balance over the last 15 years. Has that changed? What's that? Now, I guess with a bigger team around you, maybe has that become a bit easier or less? Or Do you have a work-life balance? Yeah, I, I, I mean, it's it's a conscious thing. I think everyone has to work at it. Mm. Um, one thing I've really tried to do is make work more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and, yeah, and what is work? You know, if you're, if you're going to a... You know, a networking event at three o'clock on a Friday afternoon. You know, is that still work? So, well, yeah, it's on the books, but it's you know, it's a, it's not the same as sitting in front of a screen hacking away at a keyboard for for that same period of time. Yeah. So, I think, and I've tried to encourage the, the the team at work as well to diversify what work is in terms of because especially now we see fewer people face to face and more people on Zoom. Yeah. You know, it's very easy to sit in front of a computer all day. Yeah, yeah of course. So. Um, Work-life balance, I, I remember vividly about 10 years ago, my, my partner said, uh, you're going to have to decide what's more important, me or the job. Yeah. And uh, we're not together anymore, but <laughs> not because of that. Yeah. We're, we're still very close. But that was, a, and actually the, the instant he said it, I realised, you know what, you're, you're so right. You know, I was coming home, you know, angry, frustrated. An hour after I said I would do, just because I was sorting stuff out. And, yeah. you know, when you run a business... That's that's on you, yeah, you know. Yeah. If if you're taking too much on, you need to find a way to take less on, or to take people on who can share that that workload with you, yeah. because you can't do everything yourself. So I think a lot of people in business have a bit of an epiphany moment where they realise I'm not going to do this anymore, or I'm going to find a better way to to do yeah, this, yeah. or I'm not going to let it affect me anymore. Yeah. That's the other thing, you know. We're not we're not packing parachutes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so <laughs> so. Yeah, at the end of the day, most things can wait till the next day. Yeah. And actually, if you're, yeah, we all have an incredibly high standards about you know, the service we aim to deliver. Yeah. And I can tell you, you know, when you're working with, with banks and you know, large law firms at the moment, service is not a strong suit for most of them. So I know that we're, we're delivering great service where we possibly can. Yeah. But yeah, it, if you're not happy mentally, then, and I've used happiness uh, a lot in, in this chat, but I think... I mean health as well, you know, mental health. Yeah, yeah, cool. You know, I, I've never had a, a really, really dark patch with mental health, but I've definitely had periods where I've been stressed or, or yeah, yeah, yeah. anxious for a sustained, sustained period of time, and you can't perform properly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So really it's about self-preservation, having a good work-life balance. Yeah, no, I love that. And, I, and do, do you find, now that do, do you find it easier to switch off? Like, are, are you able to switch off? Because like, I, I think that's one of the things that are struggle with and I'm speaking to people on here when when it's yours and it, you're in it so much to even that time you're not in it you go okay um, I've only worked at half nine this morning I started I picked up the laptop and started mm -hmm. doing some work and then half three I picked the kids up and I've gone down the beach afterwards for a bit and then I've done a bit of work at night but so on the face of it I've actually been at my computer a few hours so I haven't worked overworked but your brain's still on it so you're not present in that moment so you, you're constantly still thinking so you are actually still working because your brain's still still there. Yeah, I mean, that's the tricky thing. I mean, you've got kids. A lot of the, the guys that work on kids, I, I haven't. So I don't have that yeah, yeah. added dynamic of, of those extra plates to yeah, spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I, th I, I massively respect anyone who, who manages to, to do all of that because it makes it much more difficult yeah, because yeah. you really, if you want to be present there for your kids when they come home from school, you have got to take some time out yeah, from yeah, three yeah, o'clock yeah, yeah. till six o'clock maybe and then yeah. you know do you want to sit at home and get the laptop back open or do you want to open a bottle of wine and, <laughs> you know, and so I, I do switch off I mean there's certain things that you can't switch off from and you've just got to try to be at peace with them because yeah. if you've got problems you can either affect them or you can't do anything about them yeah. if you can affect them then do something yeah. and work out what you can do but if you can't affect them you know there's no point stressing about it. You've just got to try and not let it bother you so much. But when you when you go away then on holiday, for example, do you do you take the laptop? Is that something you still go? 
Oh, my wife for a couple of weeks, but I log in and do a couple of little bits, or do you literally go? Oh, I'll come back in two weeks. I, I like to monitor, so I, 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 I take the phone, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so I'll keep an eye on emails, but I, I think, mo- and I'm still not great at taking more than a week off. But I'm more comfortable taking a week off because yeah. a week's long enough, uh, and then the, you know things do build up for when you get back. There's always you know bigger stack of emails, so I like to, I like to keep the inbox um, in check. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think I think the, the guys at work know that they can contact me if they need me, yeah, but yeah. they've got to work out, you know, do they need me? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> is, 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 is this that important? Uh, and actually, I think, you know, th- th- you can tie that in with, with giving people a bit more autonomy as well and, yeah. and saying, look, you, you know, you've got my permission to try and sort these things out. You yeah. know, I trust your judgment. Deal yeah. with it if you possibly can. If, there, if there's a real issue on there, I guess that, that for them having that safety net, knowing that you're... You're there. If, if not, I get back to I guess back to company culture. Like you create a strong company culture that you go away and you, you know that then people in charge are going to run it. And it's going to be run smoothly. But you know that you're there. Cause I'm I'm the south. Oh, and, and and actually I'm getting better at going away and and switching off a little bit more. But I actually for me just to log back in for an hour or so when people are still in bed or at night or whatever when everyone's gone to bed. That just in my mind just makes me actually I'm less stressed because I'm not for me to just do that and go away for a week or two weeks I'm like what's going on I just want to like you said just want to monitor or make sure things are okay and being able to check in but I think that's for me personally I think that's okay like I don't know yeah no I agree I think if you inadvertently get stuck into long technical conversations yeah, with yeah. clients about jobs and yeah that's probably can translate to most businesses yeah, yeah. that's probably what you want to avoid but you know the odd phone call to a colleague to tell her can you do me a favor can you help me out with this one yeah, yeah, yeah. you know can you reply to so and so and and actually that's the kind of you know it is if, if anyone says i want to completely switch off that's fine we'll make it work and yeah. if i you know i encourage people to do that even yeah, though i don't yeah. do it myself yeah. um yeah it yeah everyone's different and yeah, some people yeah, want to switch right. off completely and other other people are more comfortable keeping an eye on it yeah, yeah. No, i agree i agree well, look, we're coming towards the end. Tell, tell me a little bit. What, what does uh, what does the future hold for Sam Murphy? If you do any one thing for too long, you, you get bored of it. So uh, that sounds like I'm setting myself up for a big announcement, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? I'm yeah. not. We can <laughs> hear you here first. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, but also the longer you do something, the, the less good you are at anything else. Yeah. So uh, I, I want to see the business grow in the way it has done in terms of quality. I want to see how people. You know, fulfil their their full potential and and really grow their business within a business. We opened our London office earlier this year, so we've got a, we've got a space at London Bridge now, which is a lovely, lovely position. It's a great springboard for us to work with our clients that we've already got in London and build some more. Yeah. And yeah, they're in, the industry is still quite London focused, so yeah. it means we can go to more events and and you know meet more of the moving parts of the the machine that we're part of. So those kind of incremental bits of growth and and new little ventures are great within the business. Yeah. Personally, I've really enjoyed um, being involved with um, a networking group uh, called Bizmix, yeah, which is yeah. which is run by Gadio, and yeah. we sponsor it. And it's uh, it kind of started off as an LGBTQ plus networking group, but really what we wanted to do was to try and platform queer business people, give them a safe space to to meet other like minded people, yeah. but also invite anyone who wants to uh, expose their business to you know the. A, a part of the business community that maybe doesn't go to the other events yeah. and so that's been great we're, we're relaun- relaunching that in September after a little summer break um, so that kind of stuff where doing different things that yeah. are still you know in keeping with what is important to me and my values yeah. and works with the business as well that that's really important so I think more of the same yeah. uh, is, is probably that but uh, you, you never know you yeah. never know I love I love that and, and just taking what you said there and I, again uh, something I've I've really sort of tried to take from people that we spoke recently on the podcast is about uh, you know work is there and, and life is there but they actually merge especially when you've got your own business they merge quite a lot so ultimately certainly what I get from you is the core values of the business actually align completely with the core values of who you are as an individual. Um, and when that's where we sort of want to surely try and get to is because if you go in and your workplace you've got values that don't necessarily align with who you are as a person you're almost wearing a mask here and then you've got and that's not got to be a great space to be surely well that's it yeah i mean look, financial services is not known for being a you know a, a fun exciting place <laughs> yeah. but 
we do mortgages and anyone who owns a property, most people who own a property need a mortgage. So why don't we try and make that as, you know, unstiff as possible yeah, yeah, yeah. and give people an experience dealing with people that, that they align with, that they enjoy working with, rather than the old standard of, you know, putting your suit on and going down to see the bank manager, yeah, you know, 40 yeah. years ago. So look, I think the more you can enjoy your work, then the happier you're going to be and the more yeah. it rub off on everyone else. Yeah, And it, if you run a business, there's really no excuse for not having a business that tries to look after its clients and its people, you know, its colleagues, just as much as you possibly can, because the buck stops with you. Yeah. So if you can change it, you should. Love that. Love that. And and from from the Bismic point, I've been to Bismic a few times, and we've spoke with Galio about doing some joint stuff as well. It's great. I think what you what, what, what you know as a as a networking event is great. And, you know, something certainly a little bit different. I think it's really interesting as well about the the LGBTQ plus community and and trying to like you say maybe open people's mind and engage from the wider business community to bring people together and, and uh, because like you say you say it sometimes can go to the similar events where everyone's the same there and doing the same thing and it's great to try and expand people's minds and, and open more doors yeah i mean if you go to an event the, the best thing that can possibly happen apart from walking away with a big contract which is not very likely yeah, yeah, yeah. is that you meet interesting people and yeah, different yeah. people and you know we we bump into each, each other quite a lot which yeah, is great yeah, i love yeah, that absolutely. But you know, we, we yeah, you've got everything from yeah the, the regulars where you get everything from a chocolatier to you know a funeral director. I didn't know a funeral director before, yeah. and now I do. So if I need one, I hope I don't, but yeah. I know where to go. <laughs> um, and it's it's just yeah, if you can get a, a relaxed atmosphere and a group of people, and you can encourage people out of their office environments or their regular workplaces on a consistent basis, it's great because you build those little communities and you see people grow, don't you? You, know, you yeah, go to these yeah, events absolutely. and the first time someone stands up and introduces themselves, you know, the voice is a bit shaky yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah. they think they're worried what's gonna happen. Yeah. And then a few months later at the next event, you know, they're working the room and talking to everyone. So I think it's great to encourage people and we're still in this bounce back from COVID, I think. Yeah, you know, I'm still more enthusiastic than ever to get out there and yeah. just, you know, it, it's a big wide world, but it's a great local business community we've got. And I know you feel passionately about it as well with, with county business clubs. Yeah. Um, so it's just, you know, the more we can in, can meet each other, you know, the, the internet has taken a lot of personality and personal yeah. dealings out of business. Yeah. And, you know, there's definitely space to get that, some of that back. Yeah, I couldn't I echo that, mate. I couldn't agree more. Amazing. Well, look, we'll come, our quick fire questions we're going to finish off with. Um, one piece of advice would you give to your 18 year old self be yourself like uh it's easy to say looking back but you know i, I worried too much what other people thought when i was younger mm. and i think that for most i mean yeah teenagers are notoriously self-conscious aren't they and, yeah. and worried and i think you know we say i say it to my nieces and nephews just be yourself you know treat other people how you'd want to be treated but be yourself don't pretend you're someone that you're not Um, who has been your biggest inspiration throughout your journey and why? So I mentioned my dad already. My mum and dad have been incredibly positive influences on me growing up. Uh, they're up the road in Horsham, Manning's Heath, living the dream. <laughs> um, so they, they've been hugely influential, I know it's a bit cliched. In terms of business, I think, um, I'm, I'm not a big one for quotes, but there's a Richard Branson one that always stuck out to me, yeah. which was, you know, if someone offers you an opportunity, say yes, and then work out how you're going to do it. Because there's been a few of those moments where you know you get a difficult piece of work or you get invited to something and you think, oh, this would be great, but I've already got something going on. Just say yes yeah. <laughs> and, and make it work. So and I think yeah, the Virgin brand is a great example to, to a lot of people. There, They've taken industries that were pretty stiff and they've tried to make them fun. And yeah, that, that's important to me. You know, delight your customers, try and make things fun. And in the tougher times, people will, will respect you for it, and that they'll, you know, they'll gravitate towards you if you can, if you can stand out from the crowd a little bit. Love it. I um, I, I, I've, I said I think I put a post on a while back saying about I, I think I've become a bit too much of a yes man because I do I'm exactly that. Like, people go, do you want to do that? Oh, I used it as the example when I done that dance with Panina. Yeah. Like, Sam, she sent me a voice note. Can Sam, do you want to do this? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sounds like a great idea. And all of a sudden, next come up. Is he going to do this? I'm going to answer. Okay, yeah, but it was. But the amount of fun that that was was um, and such a brilliant experience. 
something as simple as that was just brilliant. And you go, oh, if I just go, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I can't commit to that. I haven't got the time for that. You yeah. set on some great opportunities. I mean, that that was brilliant. But that's one of those, like, if someone said to me, do you want to, if I got bought a bungee jump from a, and I, I've traded it in for something else. I'm too chicken for it. But if someone said, "Oh, you've got to do it. It's for charity." Of course, you'd say yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, "Oh, this is what have I what have I signed well, up to here?" Yeah. Yeah. It was certainly. But I never forget that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Last one. Could you recommend a business book or podcast to our listeners that's had an impact on you in your career? So we, we were talking about this a bit off air before we started. I, I, I'm going to confess, I, I don't. I've got a stack of like I think I've got five business books at home that have been recommended to me. I haven't touched any of them. <laughs> I've had them for about a year and a half, uh, and I've been given a few over the years. So I, I think in my pursuit of a good work-life balance, I, I don't really enjoy business stuff in my proper downtime. Yeah. I don't I don't spend a lot of time in the car, which I, yeah, you know, yeah. or, or traveling. So. Uh, so I don't really, is the honest answer. But I'll come back, I'll let you know once I've read them. <laughs> you start listening to these podcasts more. And yeah, yeah, do, like, this yeah, one. The, yeah, obviously. The, the County <laughs> Business Talks podcast is what I'd recommend to any uh, aspiring Sussex or <laughs> further afield person. Like gold, <laughs> listen. It's, it's honestly been great getting to know you, obviously, over the last few years. And I was so delighted when you said about coming on. And it's been a brilliant conversation. And there's so many, so many great insights there that, you know, like I said, stuff that you've learned from that you're able to go, I've made that mistake, you know, this is how I've dealt with it. And, it and I think there'd be so much for people to take away. So mate, thank you so much for your time and coming on. It's been uh, been awesome. Pleasure, great to be here. Thanks mate. Mate, Ledge. And that is a wrap.